Hey everybody, Ozone B here doing something a little bit differently. Just the other day, Iscal and crew announced what they're calling the Vault Cast. It was a stream, but it's essentially a podcast where they talk about Vault Hunter's current status and its future plans, which is amazing. But there was very little notice on it. It was announced on Saturday and then took place on Sunday. And so I can very easily see that one, somebody might not know that it had happened, and two, might not have time to watch the two and a half hour stream to get all the information. So I wanted to do an update roundup sort of summary of the VaultCast. Obviously it can't be an update roundup because, well, there's nothing to demonstrate, so I'm calling it a reaction video instead. Now there's a really good bullet point summary on the official Discord, and I'll put links to the YouTube video and the Twitch stream in the description down below. But the purpose of this video is to kind of summarize things the best way I know how and give you my opinions on what they mean. Um, after that, we are actually doing 11.2 as well. Um, we're going to stay on the 11 train for a while longer. We're going to stay on the 11 train for a while longer. There is one more thing we want to do in update 11.2, which is potions. So there you go. Potions are slated to have a full rework in 11.2. Then they went on to talk about some of the changes that they were intending to make. What isn't changing, however, is the fact that you have to unlock the higher tier potions through mods. No, what is actually changing are the effects that you get from the potions in addition to the healing. So specifically, we're talking about these guys. Vials, brews, potions, mixtures, those kinds of things. And when these were first introduced, I called it out saying I didn't think these effects were very useful. You get 30 seconds of something like item quantity or critical hit resistance or something like that. And it's just not very useful. It's just not very satisfying. So those are getting reworked significantly. They threw out several ideas, including a limited regeneration or mana regeneration or just a plain mana boost and things like that. Things that will help you more immediately and feel more satisfactory in the vaults. And they went on to say that the higher tiered potions, you know, the brews and mixtures and things like that, will have effects that are more powerful. So like on a vial, you might get regeneration one, but on a brew, you might get regeneration three. All the way maybe even up until a full mana regen. We don't really know. There's still a lot up in the air, but that is going to be the big focus for the next update, 11.2. There's another thing. We are also redoing the loot tables inside the vaults. And this may sound like a negative thing and people may get scared, but we're not actually removing any of the good stuff you find, but we are going to redo the garbage that you get in vaults. Less junk in the vaults? Oh, that sounds like a change I can get behind. So specifically, they're talking about the tons of torches, bread, scaffolding, that kind of stuff that you find in wooden chests and just clutter up your inventory. Now, they still want there to be some junk that you find in those chests. They want to make it so that you can keep it and get something of value out of it, but also not feel bad if you don't. So whatever they're replacing the junk items with will have a very minimal soul value and can be diffused into soul dust, which makes a lot of sense. Sounds pretty good to me. But of course, so many people said, oh no, now what am I going to smelt stuff with? I've been using the torches and scaffolding to do all my smelting. <laughs> I swear, you can't win for losing sometimes. Update 12 is going to be the last update where we make system reworks. But basically, uh, we want to, uh, in update 12, finalize the, the systems that we have so that going into update 13 and the future, we're not reworking things. Holy smokes, that is incredible news. The remaining systems that we are intending to rework are Eternals. All oh, right, finally. I think it was promised in like uh, update 10 or something. I'm glad they're getting around to it now though. We have committed to rework Eternals for update 12. So what does that mean for everybody with update 12? Well, they were saying basically that Eternals won't need a cryo chamber in order to be summoned. I think the skill will summon it directly if I'm reading between the lines, but if you do make a cryo chamber, you'll keep your summon as your Eternal or something like that. And furthermore, the individual stats on the Eternals will go away. The Eternals level will be determined by your level and will get more powerful as you gain levels too. 
You won't need to feed them any burgers, so that's great because that was pretty much a waste to begin with. But there is a downside to all of this. The power of the Eternal is also amplified by your gear, which means if you want to have more powerful Eternals, that means you're going to have to build gear with those stats, which means some kind of new mechanic being introduced on your gear and some shuffling of the affixes that go on those gears. So there might be some kind of new stat for Eternal Defense or Eternal Attack Boost, and these things will show up on some of your gear pieces. Again, this is still very much up in the air, this is what they've told us on the stream, and I'm paraphrasing, which means I could get it wrong. But the bottom line is, they want you to have to make a choice. Do you want to have powerful Eternals, or do you want to have better skills or something? Basically, you need to choose, more specifically, how your gear affects your abilities, and Eternals is one of those abilities that you have to factor in. The next system rework that's coming in update 12, and this is also something where people are going to go like, no, is relics. Wait, what? I didn't think anything was wrong with relics. So what, like the main issue we had, um, and we wanted to add more relics for a while, like more relic sets, but the issue we faced was, well, every relic set adds 30 more seconds, so we don't want to have an exceeding amount of minutes in a vault. Well, I understand the devs not wanting us to have too much time in the vaults, but I don't see why they wanted to add more relic sets. They seem fine to me, honestly. The other side was that when we add more sets, the individual relic becomes more and more rare. Well, that's a problem I certainly faced. I think I've got three relic sets that I have yet to complete because I'm missing one in each set. And I think I'm not alone in having that problem, right? So the bottom line is they are doing away with the added vault time altogether. No longer do you have to collect sets of relics because some people even found the relics confusing. Like, hey, I got a pickaxe, but I can't use it when it's the minor set relic piece. Anyway, the relics that you do have won't go away. They're just purely decorative. Instead, the vault timer will forever and always be only 25 minutes. Well, except for fruits. Fruits are the only way that they want you to be able to extend the vault timer. Relic pieces will still exist and you will need to collect them and turn them in for a reward. Something akin to a bounty, except it doesn't really change. And furthermore, you can collect the relic sets over and over and over again. And collect the same bounty over and over and over again. So if there's something in particular that you need, well, you can try to farm the relic set for it. Relics also won't be completely random, and I'm assuming they won't be tied to a vault completion either. Instead, there will be predetermined ways that you can find the relic pieces so that you can collect sets of 5 or 10 or however many it requires and turn it in for the reward. One other interesting change that was announced at about the same time is that Vault Hunter Patreons will be able to have some input into the process of creating things for the next few updates. So, for instance, if you have an idea for a relic set or a relic piece itself, you can suggest it, maybe even come up with the art, and suggest a reward. Now, obviously, the dev team has final say on any of these suggestions, but this is interesting in that it really allows the community, and especially the Patreons, to feel like they have a say in the game development. And this is just one of the things where they announced Patreons can have some special input or access into the development process of the game. So if you're a Patreon, make sure you look that up. And if you're thinking about it, and this all sounds pretty cool to you, well, this might be just the incentive that you need in order to actually sign up to become a Patreon. We have two more systems stated here. <clears throat> the next one that we are reworking, but this may not be for update 12, and that is the God Favor system. Is something that we, we want to do more with, but the way it is right now is very uh, difficult for a new player to understand. It is uh, very broad. We want to, we don't have the design finalized for this. Uh, I guess? That's something else I didn't think was really broken. Want to make it better. It's not, it's not interactive enough. Uh, it's not tangible enough. Uh, it's not exciting enough. Well, I will give you that. They're not really very satisfying. And honestly, when I'm in the vaults, I don't really worry about God favors. So, okay, it seems like the system could use to be overhauled. But I feel like you're trying to put too many things into update 12. 
I feel like it's getting a little big as it is, and this isn't something that needs to be done in order to be in-game. But I guess in order to make the goal of not having any more features, new features and new systems being created, I suppose it's a new system, but yeah, update 12 is getting really big and I'm getting a little worried about it. Now as for the rework itself, they didn't really provide any other information or any examples. So this is about all we got to go on right now. Uh, the final system, our current implementation of raw vaults, so we're talking sky vault vaults here, uh, has a bunch of flaws that we are aware of. I know it's talked about a lot. Um, the theory is there, and it works, but it's a bit chunky. And this may also not be an update 12 thing. So I'm mentioning these things just so people know what expectations you have. Raw vaults? Like sky block vaults? Hmm. Now, admittedly, I don't know anything about them. But again, this seems like a bit of a reach to try to cram this all into update 12. But apparently it's been causing enough backlash that they feel like they have to get it done. One change they did mention is that there's not going to be a vault objective associated with raw vaults anymore. And I think that's a big part of the clunkiness that they're talking about. And it's interesting, they also said that they planned to bring raw vaults into the overworld Vault Hunters experience. So that you could go resource mining or maybe even just decorative block gathering without actually going out into the overworld. And just go into the vaults to go get it. I don't know, I think this sounds like it's an okay plan. But again, it really doesn't seem necessary for update 12. Now... Let's go into the update 12 stuff that's not system remake. That's new things that's coming. The new and exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's coming in update 12 is an achievement system. We are implementing an achievement system that is, you could call it a longevity quest system. You will have an achievement board, much like other games have achievements, and they will all be awarding uh, transmogs. Whoa, boy. Another big new thing in update 12. Now, I like my transmogs as much as anybody else, honestly. And an achievement system would indeed be nice. There's been a lot of things that I felt needed something to happen when you did it. And the quest system sort of satisfied that itch. But an achievement system can be done on a much larger scale. For instance, they talked about having achievements that might require running over a thousand vaults in order to accomplish. Something like killing 10,000 horde mobs or something like that. Whew, that's a lot. There are definitely some big achievement plans there, huh? But does it need to be done for 12? I'm sounding like a bit of a broken record here. I think the idea is to have a few achievements in and to have the overall achievement system in place and continue to flesh out the achievements themselves over time. But they want to get the system in place, and I get that. One really nice thing about achievements is that it gives players a goal, an optional goal. You don't have to do them, but if you want to, you can. And this can help keep the motivation going when people would otherwise get bored and quit. So overall, I think it's a good thing. Another thing that's coming in Update 12 is unique items both me and hell and everyone else on the team love the idea of chase items in, in games like this things that you want to find um and basically what unique items is is a new rarity uh alongside scrappy common uh, rare epic omega it will never be best in slot this is very important it will never be best in slot it will be best niche in slot so unique items actually sound pretty neat you heard Eskal, they're never going to be best, but they're going to be best niche. And he went on to give an explanation of what that might mean. Basically, unique items will be a way to get an additional modifier on a piece of equipment that doesn't normally get that modifier. You can't get any plus movement speed on boots. But with a unique item, and their example was called pacifist sandals, with those, you could get some movement speed on your boots. And a very important caveat here to the unique items is they are unchangeable. You cannot re-roll any of the stats. And the stats themselves will be based on your level. So if you find the same unique item, again, later on in your playthrough while you're a higher level, you'll be able to get higher stats on those items. Now, they're not purely collectible, although the collectability is a factor. They are also useful, but in very niche circumstances. So overall, I give it a thumbs up. I like the idea quite a bit. 
Additionally, Unique Items is one of those areas where the Patreon community can be involved in defining what those items are and what they do. I think we'll get something pretty clever from the Patreons, and if you have any ideas, well, they want your support. It provides more interest, and people just can't refuse collecting things sometimes, so this is all good. Uh, now we're getting into endgame content. Before we do, I want to say that Update 12 aims to bring back etchings. But we are completely redoing them. They're not going to be like they were in Season 2. Etchings are going to be a thing that you find in Endgame. That means after you've reached level 100, we will get into how you find etchings in a little bit. What is an etching? An etching is an item that you attach to a gear piece of your choice. And it gives you a bonus. Wow, so now we're adding etchings back in too? Now, for those of you who played 1.16 and played till the end, you might remember etchings as things that you collected and put on your gear pieces, and you needed four of them to make a set. But this is going to be different in that each etching is going to stand on its own. There won't be any etching sets. And the effects that they give you will all be completely different from what they were in 1.16 too. One example they said was that you might get one that gives you a second Nova a few seconds after doing your first Nova. Or maybe you can do Dash without doing cooldowns. Those were their two examples. But the bottom line is it seems like these etchings are going to make your abilities and talents more useful and more powerful. Just like in 116, you attach them to a piece of armor. And I'm assuming an armor can only have one etching done onto it and that it can't be modified. I think it might be able to be removed, but beyond that, it's pretty well fixed and set in stone. At least that would be my assumptions anyway. But as they said, etchings will only be available post level 100. I do recall hearing at some point that level 100 was not intended to be the end game. It was the highest level that you can get, yes, but that's not where the game ends. And that leads right on into the next point of what is the end game content looking like. Now we're going to talk end game content. So how do you get etchings and, and, and what's the point that after level 100, uh, the, the stated goal that we have at the moment is 25 artifacts. But what happens when you have 25 artifacts? Well, nothing, but that's going to change in update 12, isn't it hell? There is a lot of stuff that is to be done after level 100. All right, bring on the final vault. So first of all, Artifacts is a gatekeeper to Endgame. Um, so your first thing, if you want to engage with Endgame in Vault Hunters, is to collect 25 Artifacts. All right, so let's talk about Artifacts real quick then. They said that there will be a new quest created that you get to when you're level 50, and it will give you your first Artifact. Artifacts before level 50 cannot be found. And they said that the artifacts are supposed to be a lot more obtainable after level 50, to the point where by the time a person reaches level 100, they should have all 25 artifacts that they need. They didn't say exactly what you need to do with the artifacts, but you'll need to do something with them in order to unlock the rest of the game. And if for some reason you don't have 25 artifacts by the time you're level 100, well, you just have to keep running level 100 vaults until you get them. Once you have got your artifacts, you will unlock the greed system. The greed system itself will be a progression-based system, much like uh, talents and abilities, but not talent and abilities. It will be more like uh, attributes. It will also be different per every person, or per every time you play through the pack. You don't have to choose the same path. All right, so this sounds kind of like a specialization or a class or something if you don't have to choose the same path. I'm really curious about what these paths are, and they didn't talk about it at all. They did say, however, that there were going to be 50 levels to the greed system. So after level 100, we kind of start over with a new level set going to level 50. One big thing is that after you're, after you're into the greed system, um, you're going to be able to access a new type of vault, um, which we currently call Ancient Vaults. Hmm, Ancient Vaults, huh? This is starting to sound a little bit like an old arcade game, where once you get to the end of the phase, you kind of just start over. But everything moves a little faster, and it's, the game is just a whole lot harder. I get the feeling that there's more to the greed system than just Ancient Vaults, but 
I'm starting to get a little skeptical about what the point of Vault Hunters is. I guess after we get through the 50 levels of the greed system, then we get to the final vault? And I see a question that I can answer. I've seen that several times. Will there be a final vault? No. What? No final vault in Vault Hunters? Well, then what do we do? Finale, if you will, uh, is at your choosing. Complete the artifact puzzle, do all achievements, do a set of achievements, uh, reach tier 15 in, uh, in Ancient Vaults. Just reach the highest tier or higher than your friend. Yeah, reach higher tier than your friend. You name it. The goal is yours. We are there to provide different goals. Aye, aye, aye. That was one of the things that I did like about Vault Hunters. There was a goal. There was an end. And now there's not. Now, they did spend an awful lot more time talking about the greed system, ancient vaults, things like that. And honestly, it, I just kind of tuned it out. It's so far away. I really don't feel like it's important to know the details, nor do I feel like it's important to share them with you. They talked about some kind of tier system that I gotta admit I didn't really understand. They talked about abyssal vaults and gear and other stuff that, like I said, I just kind of lost interest. I got what I wanted and that's the near-term plan for Vault Hunters. And a lot of that sounds really, really promising. Really promising, honestly. But to be blunt, Update 12 is way too big with everything that they want to put into it. If they actually try to make Update 12 with all of the things that are scheduled to be in it, it's going to be a bug-ridden mess. And it's going to take a long time to complete. Please, Escal, please break things up into more steps. There's nothing magic about Update 12 saying that you want to finalize the systems, and it's a noble goal, definitely. But what you've got slated is way too much. And the bottom line is, you're setting yourself and everybody up for failure if you try to move forward with throwing all of that stuff into Update 12. I know you didn't ask, but you want my reaction, and that's my reaction. The last noteworthy thing that they talked about was how the Vault Hunter's official SMP is going to be restarting. After Update 13, assumedly, they're going to restart the official SMP into Season 4. And this leads to some confusion, or potential confusion, because the Vault Hunter's pack has always been tied to the official SMP seasons. This is the third edition of Vault Hunters, after all. But that will deviate now with this restart. Season 4 will start, and the Vault Hunter pack will still be 3rd edition and continue to be revisioned. And with that, I think that's the most important things that happened during the Vault cast. Of course, they talked about other things. Of course, I might have missed some things, but that's the nature of a summary video like this. Also, as usual, if you like this kind of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to continue to work on, cover, and talk about Vault Hunters for the foreseeable future. And it'd be nice to have you right there with me. My channel's been extremely successful thanks to everybody. I appreciate the support from each and every one of you. Honestly, I do. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys and your support. So thank you so much. Anyway, remember, uh, be excellent to each other. I'm out.